This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a Texas woman, and she's very, very happy because she is about to get married. She's going to get married. She's visiting New York City, and she was so excited about her engagement, she opened a window in New York City and shouted, I'm engaged, New York! Oh, this is going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I don't even know if I need to hear the audio, BJ. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, you being a, a native New Yorker, you pretty much know how this is going to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone wants to share their opinion after something like that. Well, sure, people want to share in the joy, don't they, in New York? Uh, yeah, Steve's right. It took barely a second for someone on the street below to yell, Yeah, F off, lady. Ready? I'm engaged, New York! <laughs> I just love it here. So that's what you can expect, huh? <laughs> in fact, that was Billy Joel that responded to her. Oh, wow. there we go. It was a New York state of mind. Yeah, that's what it is. She wow. totally got this idea from an episode of Friends. Like, Monica, when she finally gets engaged, yells out like she's out on her balcony. She's like, I'm engaged! I'm engaged! And then uh-huh. people start yelling at her, shut up! Oh, it worked out exactly as she probably planned it then. Except, you know, not not as mean with the F word. <laughs> well, they couldn't use the... I'm sure that's what people would have said even in the Friends days. But right. they were, you know, on regular television. <laughs> you know, Vicky, you got me thinking, because I wonder if that's exactly what she was thinking. Uh, including the response. <laughs> It's funny because they, they, she clo- she captioned it, and it looks like the person said, shut the F up, and it sounded like a woman. So do you wonder if that woman maybe is just like a little bitter, maybe not Wait, married? Or- you're asking me if uh, if there's a New Yorker that's bitter? Really? Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> Fair. I feel like this is a trick question. <laughs> Isn't that just the normal like mentality of a New Yorker? You know, sometimes uh, the cursing doesn't... You know, you have to get past the, the surface of the, the, the roughness and then realize that they're very soft-hearted and kind people there. Oh, really? you may, you, yeah, that may have been like a really like a warm F off. Like, oh, I'm so happy for you. It's so, I, mean, I don't know how to tra- translate, uh, you know, New York to regular. Yeah. So, I, 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 yeah, so... It sounds like that woman just wasn't in the mood to hear anybody happy. Right. Yeah, I think if anyone would have said anything at that point, it would have gotten that right. response. Right. Isn't that a sort of welcome to New York when you think about it? I, don't know. Like, uh, I just found out I'm cancer. Are free. Woo! F off. F off. Yeah, pretty much. I think. Yeah, I think okay. that's just the response you're going to get no matter what happens. I won the lottery. F off. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, a woman from Texas, ladies and gentlemen, understanding the difference between Texas and New York, right there. Yeah. What, what a crushing moment for her. <laughs> she looked actually like she was fine with it. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, we are on. You know, it is uh, January 10th. And uh, I guess some people still have their holiday decorations up. Uh, this this weekend would have been the weekend that it would have been the last weekend to have it up for me. But I ended up doing it since I was since I was Mr. COVID. Um, I had to basically, uh, you know, had to do something. So I took my decorations down early. But I usually leave them up until little Christmas weekend, which I think was last week. It was yeah. last weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Def- define decorations up. Can you have the lights up, but they're not on? 
I still right. feel like they're up, unless you unless you're gonna be like Rev and go. No, these are my all year yeah. decoration. Now lights. we have winter d- uh, lights that are out, so we still have the tree out there, but we in the snowflakes and the blue mm-hmm. lights now because oh. it's winter. Ah, uh, and then you, you uh, don't you yeah. don't turn your lights on, do you? Really, still? Yeah. Really? He's making money wow. in those LED lights. He's getting yeah, his money. Yeah, I got work. a timer and everything, and they go off exactly at, well, at whenever it gets dark, and then whenever it gets it lighted, uh, it uh, get lights back up. Look, I feel like lights now, you should only see them on St. Patrick's Day <laughs> and July 4th, right? What about Valentine's by Day? Your rule, I, just, sir. Yeah, I got the fancy lights where I can change the colors, and they are currently purple and pink. Oh, that's or like adorable. red and pinkish. So you're, you've moved right into Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Time. Are these inside or outside? Outside. Oh, and they're okay. on the timer. I can adjust the light color, the flicker, I, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really We've awesome. got uh, when, uh, a week before Valentine's Day is when we're going to go red, and then up until a week after Valentine's. So I, that, I BJ, it's 2022, man. Get with the Joneses. I yeah. understand. I got to do what's going to make us happy right now. I understand that those lights are working that way. I just feel like there are rules, man. I mean. What uh, rules? Show me the book. I ain't got no yeah. HOA. Yeah, I feel I'd like do what I want. well, that's probably why there should be an HOA. You know what? I didn't believe in them before, but now it's time to take these light people and show them what the proper rules are. And to be honest, our snowman, that giant snowman that we got from my Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever it was, would still be up right now if it wasn't for winter uh, apocalypse 2022. Oh, when oh. I got home on Friday and it was knocked over and I was like, well, oh, no. Oh, well, since he's already pretty much half down. I was like, it's going to take just as much effort to put the stakes back in and set it all up. I might as well just take it down. I think this is just like, this is the Lord's way of telling me snowman needs to go back in his box. (laughs) All right. See you later, snowman. Wow. Yeah. 39% of the people still have Christmas decorations up. I don't know if the Vickies and the Revs count since they've changed the theme. Yeah, they're not. We don't have Christmas decorations. Now it's winter decorations. Yeah, didn't know winter was a holiday. I feel like, you know, lights and stuff are holiday stuff. See, the whole world's changing. I did see one of my neighbors did switch their lights to red. And and our first thought was, is that for Valentine's Day? Must be. Probably. Or or it's now like the red light district and they're doing something untoward. Hey, now. Mm. I mean, I have yelled at him calling him a dumb whore, but I didn't realize he was taking me up on the offer. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. It's hard to yell at talk. It's hard to yell at people already (laughs) celebrating Valentine's Day. You know, the stores have already changed over. So, I mean, oh, wow. So people are going to have lights on all the time. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations to all of you. And Look plus, you celebrators. And plus, it's a Kraken game. So when the Kraken's going, I'm flashing the blue lights all over and doing the different patterns and everything. You know. Yeah, you don't flash the red light because we ain't scoring enough. These. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Our own. <laughs> Just look for an opportunity for. A well, that's today. Uh, then today, tonight, you're, baby. Yeah, tonight your light should be blue and 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 blue and and blue, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah different uh, variations of blue. Maybe nice. a little red in there for the eyeball. So here's, a, oh, that would be cool if you could get, like, one light in a row of, like, ten of them just to be, like, all blue and then a red. That's well, kind of cool. Well, I'll have you know that they actually flash blue, and then there's a little red inside of them each time. I have one setting that does that. Look at what? that. What? Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, these lights are pretty cool. I'm not going to, you know. All right. I mean, I don't agree with your light schedule, but I do think you have cool lights. <laughs> Fair enough. Here's a question. Why would a guy poop on a picnic table... And steal a scooter. Why not? Eh, well, Stevie's going to tell you why. At 617 with the Migs Report on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. 
That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com slash school zone safety. 3M Science. Applied to life. New on Curiosity Street. Are we close to building machines that are almost human? And can new technology give us superpowers? Find out on Super Sapiens. And in 1919, a British composer wrote the longest and most complex symphony in history. Conductors tried to perform it, but failed declaring it cursed. Now a group of musicians will attempt the impossible, if they dare, on Curse of a Gothic Symphony. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys. And today, oh, man, crap, I got to get working on this. But I got too much going on. We changed the Gmail. I'm very confused with that going on here at oh, work. Oh, no. I'm just trying to make things work out right, BJ. Now you're having me. the same problem, my friend. Today's National Clean Off Your Desk Day. <laughs> no, good luck with that. I'm trying to wow. figure out how to empty out space on my Gmail day. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Good luck to you on that. It's also National Gluten Free Day. So, mm. all right. Yeah. I mean, I don't usually pay for gluten anyway, so this is hey. good. Hey. I tend to pay more for gluten free. It's very ironic. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> All right, let's talk about this guy in Colorado who is just, I mean, you talk about a Grinch. His guy's right at the top of that list. He was caught on a doorbell camera on Christmas morning, defecating on a child's picnic table and stealing a scooter. Merry Christmas, everyone, and to all a good night. The funny part is, so the mom's talking to the news. They have an interview with her. She's explaining what's going on. And then just casually during all the, the interview, she she shares what her daughter thought was, was going on when she saw the poop. And her daughter had a pretty good, uh, I guess, uh, 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 thought about it. She thought it was actually reindeer poop. And But mom's like, no, it's not reindeer poop. It's random guy from Colorado poop. But I thought it was funny that the, the daughter was just like, oh, mom, that's no big deal. It's just it's reindeer poop. But here's uh, the mom talking about what happened. I've never seen that guy before. It looked like he like directly just came right to my house like he had a problem with me or something. My daughter said, mom, don't worry. It was just the reindeer. The reindeer were here, and I was like, I wish it was the reindeer, but I don't know anybody else in the world that would think doing that was okay, so hopefully if his friends see or, you know, family members, they can get on him and tell him, like, that was just disgusting and wrong. He's he's doing it for a while. Like, he's clearly... Yeah. Needing more fiber? Yeah, I mean, and maybe he is a reindeer. Maybe when they put hoods on over their heads, it, it hides the, 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 the antlers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's very well could be one of Santa's helpers right there. And then he stole the scooter, too. Well, he had to get out of there. Yeah, he had right? to find toilet paper. Yeah. Okay. That is just, no. What is wrong with this guy? Oh, like she okay. said, she was trying to figure out, does, do, like, is this oh. guy trying to get revenge on them? Like, why would wow. you just pick a random house and just poop on the picnic table? Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, there he is. There he goes. <laughs> Just, okay, like, why? I like at one oh, point dude. he makes an eye contact with the ring cam. So he probably knows... He's just probably not in his right mind. But she did say something that was interesting. So she said that hopefully his friends or his family will see this. If you're friends with this guy, how do you handle this situation when you see the surveillance footage? Do you contact him or you just say, screw it, I'm just going to contact the authorities? Yeah, I feel like if anybody recognizes him, they're not going to be surprised. And he's not yeah. even... <laughs> You know, been riding the scooter, is no, he? He's just, just walking, walking it away. With the scooter. Yeah, he's. You know what? He seems like he's a little. He's a little high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, sober people don't do that. No, not usually. No. I mean, you know, every once in a while, if I'm feeling in a good mood, maybe. But yeah, <laughs> normally I, I have to All be right. high to do it. I mean, the things you see on your ring cam, that's definitely something that, you know, whenever I get like the little alert and I'm like, oh, there's motion. Oh, no, it's just a box truck that drove by our house and just set off the alert. Like never once would I think, oh, I'm going to pull it up and there's a guy just pooping on the picnic table. (laughs) Well, Steve, (laughs) you've given me a mission. All right. Well, Seahawks, they have a mission. What are they going to do in the offseason, BJ? Because yeah. yesterday, they ended the season on a high note, beating Arizona 38-30 to to Yay. finish the season with a very strong 7-10 and record. The crazy part is they just could have won a couple more games. 
We'd be yeah, talking I mean, about them going into the playoffs. This is the interesting thing. It's going to be a great conversation with Mitch today, this morning at seven fifteen ish. Because you're right, Steve. Um, they were they all they had to do was just win a couple more games, and there were plenty of games that they could have won. And it makes you wonder, is this team, like, did they finally figure it out to some degree, including, you know, Russ just getting better and better, and then Rashad Penny, of course, who be, finally became, I mean, this was, to me, a good game for Rashad against a good team. Yep. He, you know, Strong he had, defense. Yeah, he had great games against okay teams and bad teams, but this made me think, wow, okay, Rashad, maybe you really are finally healthy and you're getting it together, which, of course, unfortunately, he's a free agent. Yeah, he sounds very enthusiastic about staying in Seattle, but of course they're going to have to you know, pay him probably a decent amount. I, don't know, I wouldn't imagine he's going to get a ridiculous amount, but he's probably going to get paid a decent amount. I'm interested. And they have, they have a lot of salary cap space this upcoming season, BJ. So I mean, there's yeah. room to spend. Thankfully. There's room to spend. Yeah, you're right about that. This is this is this may have changed a lot. We didn't think. Yeah, last week Mitch said I don't think this game's going to change a lot. I feel like it did. It is crazy. I mean, you always hear not to drink the peak Kool Aid, but you know he's right, man. When the running game is working, everything else seems to be falling into place. Russ looks phenomenal. The defense is playing great. Even uh, uh, Carlos Dunlap after the game was talking about how, like you know, the team plays more inspired when the running game's happening. So, man, if Penny could be the guy and not get injured, that that could be a difference maker next season. It does suck. You kind of wish that there was like five more games this year just to see what would happen. Yeah, I think there's a lot of teams that or, really took a look at the Seahawks and thought. This is really good that they had to that they were out as quickly as they were it, because they they would nobody wants to play a team look that's how the Seahawks always were they seem to figure it out in the second half of the season going to the playoffs looking strong yeah I feel like uh, you're right Steve that uh, man if there were just a couple more games man so yeah Russ looked phenomenal Penny of course another like 170 yards uh, about Tyler Lockett just continues to never drop a ball he looked great out there uh, uh, and one bummer thing though is what was like 10 minutes left in the game Quandre Diggs yeah oh, oh my gosh broke his leg dislocated his ankle it was so bad that the announcers like we're not showing it they were just like look it, it was gnarly, and you know players are crying. Had uh, the boot on, uh, the air cast or whatever, uh, and it was just a tough thing. So I saw like, it in real time, dude. And because you have a TV that can slow stuff down, I thought that is even before they started talking about it. I was like, "Whoa, what did I just see?" Yeah, body and parts I, don't bend that way. Yeah, and I was like, "Whoa, that that yeah, that foot is not where it's supposed to be." So after the win, Russell Wilson he spoke with uh, with uh, Shannon Spake uh, uh, after the game, and he got very emotional. He was talking about the game, how excited. It was about the team effort, but when you started talking about Quandre Diggs, you really saw and heard an emotional side of Russell Wilson. It was a complete team effort. I mean, there was so much. Anytime we, we uh, play Arizona, it's always a wild game. We know that. And there was a lot of battles, but we kept overcoming every obstacle. And I think that's what it takes to be great. And um, we stayed the course in the midst of the game. And, um, you know, my heart hurts. Uh, my heart hurts for Diggs. Um, he's, he's done such a good job, you know, and um, he's, he's played his butt off all year, you know. So, uh, you know, he's a great leader. Uh, he's a great man. Uh, and uh, just praying for you, Diggs, if you can hear me. But uh, I love you, brother. And I know uh, Tyler Lockett asked the coach if he could stay back and just stay with him because they're like really cl- they're their best friends. And he was just like, I just don't want to leave him here in the hospital by himself. So uh, yeah. he's sticking back. And, you know, he's he's going into his uh, free agency, too. And that's, that's got to be an emotional thing for that guy as well because he's looking to get paid pretty well because he had a great season. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Is that everybody's had a good season. <laughs> you know, the people that have ended up having a good season, you're like, oh, well, will they be with us? And, of course, Dixie hopefully will, you know, get all healed up and be able to get back to the game. Also, after uh, the game, Russ continued to talk with uh, Shannon and address his future with the team and also showed a lot of love for his teammates. Oh, man, I love every single one of them. And, uh, you know, I pray that I'm back. You know, that's, that's always the hope. And, uh, you know, that's my focus and just getting better every day, you know. And uh, I love this city. Uh, I, you know, I love this. I love this team. You know, I, I left it all on the field every play, you know. And, um, you know, I, and, and I, you know, I've always dreamed of being here in Seattle. I've always dreamed of playing 20 years here, you know. So uh, th- that, that's my prayer. Stay. Keep praying. We need you, Russ. Keep praying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, he's saying all the right things. But at the same time, you know, you can sort of, you know, it's like, but it may, you know, there's there's question. Well, also his question about Pete Carroll and his future, and I absolutely love Pete was asked about that, and his response was just fantastic because they're like, hey, Pete, do you think you're going to be back next season? Which is a very odd question to ask someone like, hey, Pete, you think you're going to get fired? And his response was, no, I'm in great shape. Because, of course, the coach is going to be like, you know, I don't know. I've done some things that maybe are warranting me being fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's con- he's, 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 got, he's still got contract, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a matter of whether they decide to pay him and have him head out. That That's really the only question, but... 
Ay, ay, ay. I, I just, I'm, I don't see that change happening either. I, I, I don't know, man. I think this game made a big difference, at least in fans' eyes. I don't know if it made a difference in management eyes. Uh, and yesterday, the unthinkable almost happened. And we talked about it on Friday, BJ. I think everybody was watching Sunday Night Football at the on the edge of their seat. So we Rooting said, for a... A tie. Yes, of course. It was not so... What was it? Uh, on Friday, we were talking about how the playoff picture was set up so that if the Colts would lose to the Jaguars, it would mean that both if the Raiders and the Charger, Chargers tied their game on Sunday Night Football, they would both go into the playoffs and bump out the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. So we're like, it's not even... It's a massive if. The Colts are playing the Jaguars. Well, the Jaguars beat the Colts. So oh, now all of a sudden, everyone's oh, no. just like... It's time to watch Sunday Night Football. And you watch this game, and it's going back and forth, and then it's at the end of the game. There's only seconds left in the game. It looks like the Raiders are going to win. What do the, the, the Chargers do? Score a touchdown with, like, a second left in the game. We go into overtime. Both get field goals. So now you're like, geez, man, this game is going to end in a tie. How nuts. And some people were like, their signs fans are just saying, just take the tie. Everyone's tweeting, right? just take do the it. tie. Like, why not? But uh, at the end of the day, spoiler alert, uh, the, the Raiders get a, a field goal with one second left in the game to win 35 to 32. And it was just like, oh, my gosh. Could you have imagined, especially if they both got a field goal? I'm like, this game might actually end in a tie. Yeah. And then yeah. there's Collinsworth on the announcing, which I thought, I'm like, if ever was there an argument to say that football is fixed, he sounds so, like, over the top, like, I can't believe this. Could it happen? I don't know. Is there going to be a tie? I'm like, it's almost like as if you knew there was going to be a tie if the tie did happen. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, that, that that was amazing that all that fell into place like that. And, boy, you know, the Seahawks can feel the way they feel, but at the same time, the Colts and the Seahawks, basically ended their season the same except who feels like the bigger losers got to be the Colts <laughs> I mean this I mean it, they, they got they really got it manhandled by the Jaguars it's just like wow my favorite was when the game was tied it's in overtime at one point they found the one Pittsburgh Steeler fan that was in attendance to this Raiders Chargers game and he looked like as if he like <laughs> something like he just saw a ghost he's like you know this can't be really happening. Imagine being the Steelers players watching that game. Oh yeah, man! Uh, you're, you're just like the odds. What oh. the odds are? You're, you're just they had to be celebrating almost even before that game, knowing like it's not going to end in a tie. We're in. I think it was Collinsworth. The one of the announcers was like, if I, if this was a Disney film, I wouldn't even believe it. It's not a believable ending. Like it was, re, it was just ridiculous. Yeah, how this was unfolding, but it didn't end the way that we wanted. Wah, 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 wah. Unless you're a Raiders fan, then it ended exactly how you wanted. They're going into the playoffs. Yeah. All right, Kraken are in Colorado tonight. I don't think the game's can No, it hasn't been canceled. I so hope not. I hope not for Danny's sake because Danny is currently in Colorado with his buddy who lives there, and they're going to the Colorado Kraken game tonight. Of course, we could watch it on television, though. So hopefully yes. we'll see Danny. Maybe they'll pan out to the crowd. They usually do that on Root Sports. They try and find the Kraken fans on the uh, in the away games. And I know Danny will be rocking his Kraken colors. And Danny will be moving and dancing and everything, so he'll be trying to get attention. If he doesn't, I'll be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, weather, 45 degrees going to rain today. Uh, that's the major report, and that's what's up. On Friday, Steve got this one wrong. What is the capital of the U.S. state of Delaware? Lincoln? No. Mm, uh, Delaware City? No. Take me down. Fargo. Fargo? No. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Fruargo? Yes, I want to check that out because Fruargo was one of my favorite shows and the movie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, Rev gave a, gl- a great clue and said this was Ben. Uh, ben loves this city a lot. And, of course, that's when Steve was like, oh, Dover. Yeah, that's the answer. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 650 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. 
Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Um, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com schoolzonesafety 3M Science. Applied to life.